this morning I like to sum up the instructions I already gave on practicing jhana. There are various approaches. Since you cannot follow all of them, you go to choose whatever you feel comfortable. I like to recommend two approaches or choose two, one of the two objects. That is, follow your breath. After taking three deep breaths, pay total mindful attention to the breathing, exclusively, not taking any detail into account. Just follow the feeling of breath. Without your verbalizing, conceptualizing, the mind naturally becomes aware of long breath as long breath, long inhaling as long inhaling, short inhaling as short inhaling, long exhaling as long exhaling, short exhaling as short exhaling. When this, these two stages are closely followed, then you naturally, or the mind naturally, becomes aware of the entire breathing process. You don't have to do anything special, no intentional effort, but it simply follows. You notice the entire breathing process because the first two stages lead to that second, third stage. Entire breathing process is the beginning, middle and end of each inhaling and a pause, then the beginning, middle and end of each exhaling, and the pause. When the mind follows this, the breath naturally becomes relaxed, the entire breathing process becomes relaxed. It will take a while to get the breath relaxed. If you try to force it, it won't happen. But we must let it happen as it happens. And then the breath becomes subtler and subtler and subtler. until it becomes almost unnoticeable. But because of the awareness of the breath that you had originally, as the gross part of the breath disappears, the mind still remembers where the breath was, and that memory becomes the object of your awareness, your attention afterward. Then your hindrances would subside. Of course, during this whole process, when hindrance, any hindrance arises, breath doesn't become 
it's smooth and the procedure won't follow then you got to take care of that hindrance and again return to the breath when you overcome hindrances one after the other then only the breath becomes very smooth The first thing before you have the relaxed second secondary image of the breath or memorized image of the breath before that happens when the body and mind are relaxed you feel sleepy then you have to overcome that you may feel agitated then overcome that you may get upset angry then overcome that you even may be greedy that you got to overcome then you may have doubt that you have to overcome when you have overcome all these hindrances the only then the breath becomes relaxed and then arises this secondary stage where our breath is almost unnoticeably subtle the body is calm mind is calm you experience the relaxed body relaxed feeling relaxed breath only that time mind slowly it stays on the secondary image of the breath that is memorized image and then focus the mind on that then arises this what's called initial thought of friendliness generosity compassion out of that arises confidence as this initial thought stays longer which which is called sustained thought and then arises confidence seeing these stages one after the other from the beginning of the gross breath up to this point everything is in a progressive state so you become confident after the initial and sustained thoughts that gives you joy or rapture that also must arise naturally by itself we cannot force rapture neither can we make it artificially appear it has to grow manifest itself as a result of the progress we have made and that rapture or joy grows in intensity until it reaches happiness happiness becomes so calm so peaceful serene and that point there arises spark of light representing the luminous mind and that point you gain concentration whatever concentration arises before that is not real full concentration you may call that excess concentration even at that level of excess 
your hindrances are already suppressed when you gain full concentration the mind stays steadily that may last maybe a minute or two and they if you lose it since you followed these steps one after the other you can return to the same attainment when you lose it you reflect remember the steps see the weak points weak factor of jhana determine to attain it and determine to stay certain period of time don't try to determine to stay too long because it's not going to work since the attainment jhana is, is still quite fresh and tender therefore extend the period you want to stay only for a few extra minutes when that time is over the mind naturally slips back to unjhanic state and then you can repeat the same procedure all over again without getting discouraged disappointed one should repeat the process that is one approach <coughs> second if somebody naturally can cultivate metta very intensely stay with the metta with metta from the very beginning by the way when you cultivate metta you go to pay total attention to metta and cultivate in the way that we all the explain first to yourself using whatever terms words phrases you like then you feel that you are done it for yourself then include the parents teachers relatives friends in different persons adversaries and all beings then share the same degree of loving friendly thoughts with others in ten directions so you will feel that you are completely covered protected and will not all around with this thoughts of loving friendliness you may feel secure protected and safe at that point forget the words you stay with the thoughts of loving friendliness then the thoughts also will slowly fade away then you will have the feeling of metta and stay with that feeling of metta and that slowly sink into your mind into your subconscious mind and you feel that you are suffused with the feeling of metta at that time initial application of thought 
arises. That is the thought of friendliness, although you have cultivated friendliness, when it arises as initial application of thought, it arises with the thought of generosity, with compassion. And then you stay with that. And this feeling again grows in intensity. Then you have the same kind of confidence in yourself, in the metta practice, in the power of metta, the way how it relaxes the body and mind. When you have this confidence that naturally arouses your joy or rapture, that grows naturally as before to a very high degree where happiness takes it over, then the spark of light and concentration arises. Sometimes the spark of light may not appear, for somebody to notice it, but it appears and disappears very quickly for some people. They learn to bypass that or transcend that very quickly, because intensity of happiness is so great, so powerful, it doesn't matter to them whether they have the spark of light or not but they will gain concentration, absorption concentration. Remember, that is not sleepiness. You still will have these initial thoughts lingering in your mind, and because of that, you are aware that you are attaining concentration on jhana will disappear. Then again repeat, repeat the process, starting from loving friendly thought as an object, loving friendly feeling as an object, till you have initial thought, sustained thought, joy, happiness, concentration. In, when, we start, when we use metta as an object of meditation to gain concentration, we may not have a counterpart sign or secondary memorized image, there is no one single object to memorize when we practice metta. All beings dissolve into our feeling. Metta for all living beings, including ourselves, turns into metta, it turns into feelings. feeling of metta, therefore you won't have any secondary image or counterpart sign. When we cultivate metta, please remember to start with yourself and then don't try to stay on one single particular person. We got to forget the faces, descriptions, characteristics of individuals. 
You may justify thinking that they deserve more living friendliness, therefore let me focus the mind on them. That's not going to work for jhana meditation. Therefore don't single out any person, no matter how deserving that person is, put that person into the same mass of beings and let that person also melt into the same mass of beings. So the concept of being will disappear, person characteristics all will disappear, and the mind will be completely filled with the feeling of metta. These are the two approaches, one starting first little metta and then switch on to the breath and stay exclusively on the breath until you gain the secondary image of the memory of breath and then follow. The second starting with metta and follow through all the time, all the way down till you gain initial application sustained application, joy, happiness and concentration. You got to make the choice depending on your own state of mind, your personality. If one doesn't work, try the other. If one time one of them works, use that at that time. But if you try to mix both intensely at the same time, that would make it a little difficult. Therefore, stay with one at one particular sitting. You may experiment with both. One time you may try metta as an object. Another time you may try the breath as an object. There are no any particular hard, hard and dry rules and regulations with regard to these objects. All depends on individual choice. Some are more inclined to metta than others, so they use metta. Others have some difficulty in starting with metta. They can stay with breath. But they may find it easy to practice metta after the first jhana. Therefore they can, if they like, take up after the first jhana. Until the attainment of the first jhana, things would be difficult. Such people start with breath, attain the first jhana, and repeat that. Next sitting, they might try metta. And stay with that until you gain jhana. These are the two basic approaches I recommended. You may choose what you feel comfortable with.